Ladies and gentlemen, those who are watching us online, welcome to the live streaming of Taipei Plus Digital Week. Taipei Plus and Showtech Taipei were scheduled to open in September 2020. However, due to the pandemic, the events have been postponed. Nevertheless, the organizers Taitra and Tammy wanted to create business opportunities in September as well. So they decided to organize the Taipei Plus Digital Week from 21st to 29th of September. There will be online and offline activities to break down barriers of space and time, and to offer business opportunities, increasing the visibility of the shows and the exhibitors. The Digital Week will have live streaming, live interviews. New product launches and online procurement meetings. For today's program, we have the online CEO panel in the morning, and in the afternoon, we have online talks with major exhibitors of Taipei Plus and Shutek Taipei. The online CEO panel will be hosted by Mr. Walter Ye, President and CEO of Taitra. So, without further ado, President Ye, please. Greetings to our live audience. Welcome to the opening event of Taipei Plus Digital Week, the online CEO panel. As the world becomes more and more environmentally conscious, how to increase the collection and recycling rate of plastics has become an important issue for the global plastics and rubber industry. In addition, circular economy has been included as part of government's Five Plus Two Industry Innovation Program. We expect the industries in Taiwan continue to focus on the and create business models for a circular economy. We're honored to have invited iconic businesses who have set themselves apart in this wave of circular economy. Mr. Alan Wang, CEO of FCS Group; Mr. Hans Hu, manager of Engel Asia; Mr. Jack Lin, vice general manager of Polystar; and Mr. Zhong Wei Chou. VP of Plastics Industry Development Center (PIDC). From the viewpoint of their respective manufacturing processes, they'll talk to us about the development and outlook of the industry. Talk about circular economy. Taiwan's plastics and rubber industry saw and re responded to this trend quite early on, with a strong backing of small manufacturing technology and an eco-friendly way of innovative manufacturing that boasts of flexibility. Customization, high performance, and low energy consumption. They have revamped the whole process from raw material to recycling, satisfying new demands from the customers. So to start off, why don't we talk about from the viewpoint of manufacturing? How can we balance between plastics manufacturing and sustainable development of the environment? Let's hear from Mr. Alan Wang, CEO of FS Group, FCS Group, first. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are concerned about the circular economy, good morning.、Uh, for the plastic and rubber industry,、uh, we often talk about the sustainable development of the industry. And in terms of plastic material, it needs to be recollected, recycled, and reused in order to extend the life cycle of pro the product and plastics, so we can reduce、uh, the garbage, the trash rate. So、uh, for the plastic industry, we can see a lot of single-use products. For example, a food packaging and PET bottles; those are all disposable or throwaway or single-use items. So we need to collect and reuse those items efficiently. Here, I have provided a video clip for your reference. For PET bottles. The PET bottles are currently the most used products in the plastic industry. After we use them, through effective recycling, including sorting and grinding, we can make some detailed pre-classification of the raw materials. Then, after cleaning and separation action, including screening. An original secondary material, which is clean flake, can be obtained. After that, there are many applications can be made. For example, we can use PET clear sheet rolls to produce a fruit packaging material. Besides, it can be turned into long fiber eco-friendly fabrics. For applications like football T-shirts. 
many of these applications have been implemented in the industry. So next, I would like to talk about the circular economy. And from the perspective of manufacturing, what are the challenges? The major, two major challenges. One, in terms of the collection, we need to deal with different materials. For example, in recent years, because of the COVID nineteen pandemic,、uh, in terms of sterilization or disinfection,、uh, we have a lot of containers for、uh, disinfecting materials. So after they've been used, it's very difficult to、uh, recover, recycle because there's a lot of the plastics involved, and、uh, also some metal material involved in the bottle. So we need to come up with a new technology to recycle and reuse. For example,、uh, in terms of the、uh, part and component, so we can、uh, change the plastic string into. Uh, we can replace the metal string into a plastic string and、uh, make it more reusable. Another challenge we face is that how do we reuse those regrind material? Because re regrind material or recycle material, they are now with the same properties. They have different melting points. They have different densities. So for pl the plastics manufacturing industry. Uh, when it comes to the manufacturing and production process for regrind or recycled material, it's more difficult. So, for the machinery, plastics machinery manufacturers, so we need to develop a new technology in order to allow our users to recycle plastics more conveniently. For example,、uh, take our company for example. We have this smart manufacturing. Technology we call it IMF 4.0. We can use a lot of sensors and use different algorithm to achieve the goal. We can automatically adjust the manufacturing processes so we can handle、uh, different materials, the different regrinds of different melting points. So in our production line, we'll be. Uh, have it. We'll we'll have a very smooth production process, just like using virgin material. This is how we、uh, increase the willingness of maker and manufacturers to use regrinds. And there's also、uh, double color、uh, layering technology. We can use that、uh, for some manufacturers. We need to appeal to,、uh, in terms of accessories. So we have developed this.、Uh, Multiple layer and、uh, multi color technology, so、um, we can use a virgin material for the outside, but for the inside or interior of the product, we can use regrind or recycled material. So this is、uh, frequently used in the injection molding machine industry. So to sum up, under the trend of the circular economy,、uh, these are some of the trends I have observed. First, we need to continue to develop、uh, different materials to replace glass and replace metal. So the recycling of plastics will be able to achieve. The second, we need to come up with intelligent or smart manufacturing technology in order to handle.、Uh, Recycle material of different properties and achieve a very sustainable manufacturing process. So those are the few points that I want to share with you from the perspective of manufacturing industry. Thank you. FCS is a leading brand in Taiwan as a injection molding machine manufacturers. They have come up with many innovative technologies. Next. We、like to hear from Angle Asia. Well, thank you for this opportunity、uh, for inviting us to share with the audience、uh, from the perspective of Austria some of the applications that we have had, as mentioned by Alan Wang earlier. From the Perspective of manufacturing industry, we want to have a stable and acceptable products for the client. So, in addition to a good outside appearance, 
appearance, the whole manufacturing process needs to be very consistent and stable. FCS, they have their own intelligent manufacturing factory. We also have our own IQA control. So in K2019, we also share this skin melt process, this skin melt technology. So that is the foundation of our uh, innovative applications. So next, I would like to share with you a short video uh, where we showcased during the K2019. So uh, this is a conveyor box, as mentioned by Alan Wan, it is like a sandwich, a multi-layer structure. So we have a two injection pipes, uh, like horizontal pipes, and it, the material is recycled plastics. And on top of it, uh, we will use that for new material. So we will be able to handle both, both virgin material and recycled material. Another feature is that uh, this technology is very easy to use because we uh, customize the interface already. So in terms of a mixture of new material and old material, you can decide. So when the new material goes into uh, this tube, the outside will be cooled off first. And in terms of the material in the center, it will continue to be pushed by the uh, new feet coming up in the back. So on the outer area, Outer layers, there will be uh, new materials, and inside there will be old material or recycled material. This is HW injection unit. We don't need a lot of space for this machine, as I mentioned earlier, because we have IQ rate control, so we can assure stable production process. This is a machine that weighs 450 tons, and and we will be able to feed both virgin material and recycle material into the machine at the same time. So you can see the core PP recycle material and PP virgin material. And during the filling process, other machines might have a instability. And sometimes uh, if you recycle a material too many times, the stability will be decreased. And during the filling process, uh, there's a question whether or not you want to fill it up 100%. That's uh, one of the questions we had. And this is where IQA control can come in and adjust. Uh, they can adjust how much injection you want. And it can automatically make that kind of adjustment instead of doing it afterwards. So uh, because we have the smart manufacturing uh, technology, we can ensure the stable, constant injection feed. So this is Engel's own proprietary robotic arm. This is the interface that we see. Can, for injection setting, you can see on the interface. And the bottom, So how much uh, percentage, how much uh, recycled material you want to use, you can uh, set the number here. 
And for injected product, you can also set the strength of the product and to make sure that it is sellable in the market. So that's the demonstration. So for the product we just saw, it's a 43% of recycle rate. But we can make it to, to 60% or 70% of recycle rate. It's because we use more recycled materials, so it affects the strength. So it really depends on the strength requirement for the products. So allow me to explain a little bit uh, the principles of, of, of IQA uh, control. So we believe that um, smart manufacturing is very important. And uh, if we have smart manufacturing, then we can eliminate some uncertainties because of the environment. Every time when we have new materials, there are uncertainties um, um, in many parameters. In the past, what we did is uh, to adjust the parameters, but now we don't have to do that anymore. And for uh, the now we can use the machine to make small adjustments and using IQA technology. And for thermal control or the cooling water uncertainties, these are the, some of the factors that will uh, affect the um, stability of the materials, and we can also make adjustments to that. And also for our employees' skill set and uh, the uh, temperature and the humidity changes in the factory. Because of these uncertainties, uh, sometimes we cannot really use only one set of uh, parameters. But with IQA uh, technology, we can cope with these um, changes and um, so that we can achieve um, stable injection. So the concept is relatively simple. We'll monitor the uh, changes of the uh, viscosity and also to monitor the position of the screw injection. So we monitor the injection uh, curve to make sure that the uh, products, uh, the quality can be accepted. It is within the range of, of accepting. And once we establish this injection curve, any other changes at the time of injection, it will be uh, adjusted real time. So this is the 120 times machine, and this is uh, the uh, test results. Traditionally, injection machines, the uh, setting will apply uh, the same injection speed, and the injection position, and the, the stable the better. But one of the problems we encountered is that um, there are small changes every time, and uh, for these changes, accumulately, uh, will affect the stability. Although we have stable setting, and uh, we do that according to the uh, machine's requirement, but the results still, there are um, variants. So, if you look at the slide, the um, pressure maintain switch point, we can adjust um, the pressure retaining uh, position. So every time we can um, ensure the um, injection position. So on the right hand side, you can see the result of um, Intel uh, IQ technology. So the injection weight fluctuation. You can see the uh, fluctuation um, can be reduced to up to 90%. A lot of our customers already verified that. Uh, so some of the uh, liquefied silicon, we can use the same method to control it. For more details, if you're interested, you can uh, approach our uh, Taiwan team and then we can share more details with us. That concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hu. And uh, is the leading manufacturer of injection machine, just like Director Hu just said. In the uh, product R&D uh, phase, 
the recycling possibility need to be put into consideration, and also we have to consider the um, requirements for uh, recycling and the reuse of materials. Of course, recycling also plays a very important role. For machines, um, we now next speaker is the uh, first manufacturer in Taiwan uh, that is um, producing recycling machines. And uh, let's now please welcome Vice President Lin from Polystar Machinery Corporate Limited. Mr. Lin, please. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for giving Polystar this opportunity uh, to share our views regarding circular economy. Just like Angle and um, FC has said, and uh, of course, they stress, they stress the importance of uh, quality stability. Allow me to briefly introduce our company. So, our company is uh, manufacturing uh, plastic recycling palletizing machines. So more than uh, we already sold more than one thousand and one hundred and ninety machines around the world. And for plastic recycling, there are two things I can um, mention to you. One is uh, post-industrial recycling um, in a factory, and uh, the second one is post-consuming. According to uh, the statistics of uh, post-industrial recycling, less than 40% of the companies are actually recycling inside of their own plants. It means that um, the waste materials are recycled during the manufacturing process and are being reused. And another portion is post-consumer. It means that um, the uh, garbage is collected from the outside, and uh, for these garbages, uh, they are cleaned, they're being washed, and uh, after processed, they're uh, going through the uh, um, the washing and the pellet pelletizing uh, process, and it can be further um, produced as materials and be reused. So, for the recycled materials, if the quality is not stable, then it, the possibility of using these recycled material becomes very small. So, we, uh, because uh, if the quality of the uh, recycled material is low, then the um, economic values of these recycled material is low. And for manufacturers, whether they're um, buying these recycled materials, of course, they also have to make sure that these recycled material can satisfy their needs, um, especially economic um, needs, so meaning that these recycled uh, materials, they are highly efficient and, uh, and it can bring economic margins. So, um, not many materials are being used efficiently, so uh, one um, of the target of our com company is to um, make our own contribution to make sure that the recycled materials can be used more efficiently. So, um, company we moved to a new factory at the beginning of the year, and one of the new factory is um, mainly built for the purpose of testing. Because for recycled material, it covers a wide range of production, including um, injection and e extrusion and PET recycling, um, food packaging, non-food packaging, and uh, blue forming machine. There are different purposes, and uh, for plastics used for different purposes, and the melting uh, temperature is different. So when we receive these materials, they are in different forms. 
So one key point is that we have to continue testing to make sure that these uh, recycled materials can be used properly and efficiently. Now we have four recycling machines taking the uh, samples sent from our customers. So we use our uh, factory to uh, do a lot of testing to figure out that these most, uh, recycled plastics can be uh, used in a more efficient way, how they can be uh, used for different purposes. So, about our strength, So for um, plastic recycling, in the process of recycling and the re um, process, a lot of gas uh, will be generated in the recycling um, processing um, procedures. So these gas need to be removed efficiently so that the pallets um, being created can have a, a stable uh, quality and can be used to generate high quality products. And uh, the second very important point is filtration. If you have a very good filtration process, it means that um, the unwanted uh, materials can be eliminated so that our end products can be as pure as possible. So when these materials being put into the production line, we can better ensure the quality of the, um, the new products. In order to do that efficiently and with high efficacy, we work together with um, companies such as uh, Schneider, Falansco, uh, Fuji, and the Siemens. We have strategic alliances in the purpose of achieving the goals of um, very energy efficient recycling process. So these manufacturers or recycling um, companies, if the efficiency is high, then it creates the incentive that more companies would want to join this industry of plastic recycling. So one thing very important that we're doing now is, is to develop user interface. We collect big data from manufacturers and the recycling companies. We use this big data to enhance uh, the strength of our machining, uh, machinery design so that the, from using this big data we know how to better use these recycled materials. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lin. Now, if we look at the world trend in terms of the material development, now um, for new materials, one thing very important companies stress on is to uh, make sure that these materials can be recycled and be reused, and also uh, to reduce the actual use of plastics. So PIDC, Plastics Industry Development Center in Taiwan, um, PIDC has been um, doing a lot of studies in the past 10 years. So we have a Vice President, President Cho from PIDC to share with us the latest trend of plastic use, including the uh, global plastic reduction policies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yen. First of all, just like Mr. Lin just said, in the materials we use, it is closely related to how these materials are recycled in the factory and how the uh, products that are being produced, how they can be recycled after being used, and we can um, 
do who use them and to um, make them new materials. Actually, a lot of companies already um, putting a lot of efforts to in the uh, plastic recycled and put a lot of efforts in developing smart manufacturing. So I'm showing you um, this is the um, booth from Andal's Chemical in the Keisho in Germany. So here we see the show um, recycling and unrecyclable and the closing the loop. So technology, uh, technically it can be done. However, there are a lot of challenges along the way. For example, the in-house recycling, well, we, for manufacturers, we don't really encounter a lot of problems if we, we uh, recycle the materials in-house. However, if these materials are already being, um, and uh, the problem is the, uh, the, the materials we collected from the outside, these materials are from uh, plastic waste. So, um, it, how if we process it um, properly, and it will affect directly the, of, of the quality of the final products. As I mentioned earlier, biomass, bio-based material has been um, under a lot of dis discussion over the past few years. So, with bio-based material, there are biodegradable material and bio-based material and recycled material. So consumers uh, sometimes are confused with the different types of bio-material. For biodegradable material, it is defined as a material that can goes back to nature after being decomposed by microorganisms. Unlike traditional plastics, it can be recycled and reused. So it can uh, be composed and then so there's no artificial or man-made material involved. So that is biodegradable plastic. But in terms of applications of plastics, we want to reduce the use of plastics eventually. So there's another direction that we want to go uh, for plastic material. Maybe we can use some elements and add the usage of natural materials instead of just using a petrol-based material. But we also encounter another challenge from the user's end or consumer's end. How can we understand the whole idea behind everything. That is why uh, we came up with this kind of uh, certification process. Uh, for example, ISO 1485 for biodegradable material, other types of material. Of course, other countries would have their own certification standards. For a PIDC, we have Taiwan's only, one and only facility that can conduct the testing on the plastics that we use. For biodegradable plastic, in terms of the commercial development, you can see from the slide, uh, from plastic pellets, you can make it into, through different blend infection process, you can make it into everyday materials. So, for example, packaging material or even 3D printing technology would also use this kind of material. So, the most commonly seen is PLA, as you can see here because uh, it's more solid, it is harder, and the melting point is lower. So it's better for packaging for room temperature, for example, food or beverages. For the past few years, the Taiwan's manufacturers have made a lot of applications in this regard, and we also have export, 
exported many materials. And even uh, in Taiwan, we can see some supply shortage in these types of PLA commercial applications. You can see that PLA commercial applications are very well received by the global market. And globally, uh, when we talked about biodegradable or bio-based material, we want to recycle and reuse that kind of material. But in Taiwan, our discussion is somewhat late compared to other countries. So in terms of closing the loop, we are not there yet. But we are promoting uh, for biodegradable or unrecyclable materials. We want to achieve several goals within the loop. We want to achieve the target of circular economy. So uh, this is the biodegradable testing center, as I mentioned earlier. We can uh, provide testing services for different manufacturers. And here I want to share with you some of the ideas. We can form alliances and test on the consumer products. So through our alliances, we can increase the reuse rate of products. As you can see from the slide, uh, there are some consumer products that after being recollected or recycled uh, with some adjustment of the formula and adjustment of manufacturing process, we can make this recycling product into value-added added product. So from a plastic suit, so we can make it nursery pot or uh, mulch film or other kinds of products using those reuse materials. So this slide also shows uh, for plastic bags, we can also come up with a new applications. Uh, we can make it into a fiber composite new material. And, uh, we can work with other industry, for example, the injection molding machine, the makers, and try to come up with a new applications for those recycled plastic bags. And this is plastic bags, as you can see. It can be applied as a regular packaging film. You can use, also use it in hiking trails. This is a brand new idea because we want to go more and more compact. So if you add a glass fiber or carbon fiber into the new material, we can come up with a new composite. But once we have come up with new products, we also need to think about the recycling of those new products. So we need to think about recyclable materials and thermoplastic materials. So we want to be able to recycle plastic and make the most of the plastic for the first time and second time and other times. Here are some examples using the scrap or waste materials. And after recycling process, we can put it into more applications. You can see from the raw materials and we can make value added high price items. And for water soluble molecular structure, we can improve the property of the plastic. So uh, we can also reduce um, environmental pollution by doing so. So we have made a lot of 100% recyclable material. But of course, we needed to change our recycling facilities in order to achieve those goals. And then we will be able to add value to the recycled material and the products made from the recycling process. Thank you. Thank you for your sharing. Talk about the circular economy. We talked about uh, a lot of governments government are coming up with the policies to reduce the use of plastics. So now I would like to hear from our speakers in terms of the plastic policies across the world. What are the challenges and opportunities for uh, 
the plastics and rubber industry. First, I would like to invite Mr. Wang. Okay, thank you. Well, talk about the plastic reduction policy and the challenges and opportunities. I have to be frank. The challenge is bigger than the opportunity, especially for certain products, products, the single-use products, the plastic bags or plastic straws. They have a huge impact on the industry. But I have seen a report after the implementation of the plastic reduction policy across the world at beaches across the world in terms of disposable plastic bags and straws, actually we have seen some reduction of such a single-use material. But for other materials, for example, glass or metal or fishing ropes and fishing gear, we have seen an increase of more pollution into the ocean. So the reduction should not be an end because our ultimate end, our ultimate goal, is to reduce environmental pollution. Um, I think there are several directions we could go. Uh, first, about the, the replaceability of the material. When we use plastics, uh, we can use different kind of manufacturing process in order to make our final product more environmentally friendly. For example, we can make it more easily uh, degraded after uh, being consumed. And also for the plastics and rubber industry, we have some opportunities as well. We can turn plastics into a, a resource we can use in order to make our environment more uh, from environmentally friendly. For automobile industry and transportation industry, uh, because we need to have more compact, lightweight technology involved in order to make our products more environmentally friendly. So that kind of lightweight technology, lightweight trend will be helpful for the development of our plastics and rubber industry. Because for the automobile industry, the recycling rate is very high. So if we can use plastics to replace glass material or metal material, we'll be able to develop our industry tremendously. And also for logistics industry, they need to use a lot of pallets. In the past, we will use wood to make the pallets. In the future, maybe we can use plastic pallets or recycle plastic pallets so we can reduce the logging volume or quantity. So after some thinking, plastics should not be a major problem. It should also be an opportunity for us to solve some of the problems that we already have. So that's what I had to share. Thank you, CEO from FCS. Next. Yes, I share similar concept. I think we have more challenge than opportunities because we are in the we talk business. We need to make our products acceptable by the market. However, when we talked about recycling from the very early stage, uh, the use of composite material, how can we classify different types of material and then uh, come up with a new, new manufacturing process? It, it is very costly. And for for new products, take my industry, for example, the double industry. It's a major challenge to handle um, the electronic waste, electrical electronic waste. So you need to do, find a right way to classify different kind of different types of waste materials. Because a lot of waste materials cannot go into the recycling process. They cannot be reproduced or reprocessed, repurposed. So that presents another challenge. I think maybe we need the government to uh, design new laws and regulations. But because of the global uh, economy, uh, we are talking about a lot of trade wars. So I think that would be a challenge for the global economy because we do need a, jo a joint effort in, to combat uh, that kind of a problem. A lot of the handling and processing requires money. 
if we don't have the government、um, to be on our side and come up with new laws and regulations, I think a lot of manufacturers would not opt for more environmentally friendly manufacturing process. So that's one of the major challenges we have. But for those single-use items. Because it, we face a large quantity, so it's actually easier to handle. For example, the angle、uh, PP process, we can use multiple layer filling, and there are some、uh, more applications. For example, we can use the、uh, recycled material for the inside of our products. So, from that perspective, our industry、uh, are always dealing new materials. Of course, with new materials, we have new challenges. We need to work with our peers,、uh, other companies, to improve、uh, the handling and processing capabilities. Thank you, Director Hu. And next, let's please welcome Vice President Lin from Polystar Machinery to comment on this view. Well. I can discuss you from our、um, point of view the challenges we face. In the past, before the plastic restriction policies were launched, it is relatively easy to recycle plastic bags and the plastic materials because the materials are relatively simple: HTB, LTB, etc. A lot of the、uh, The、materials can be recycled by sometimes even by the manufacturers themselves, and that they can achieve 100% recycling and the reuse of these materials. But once the policies of、um, restrict restriction on plastic use, there is actually the possibility of recycling these. Um, plastic materials has become less because,、uh, especially for some of the、um, multiple layers of, of films, it is relatively、uh, complex products, and、um, so for manufacturers, it is rather,、uh, it's harder for them to recycle these materials because they do not have the、uh, facility、uh, to reuse these materials because the、uh, the 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 products are, have become more complex. And for these、um, complex film, the recycling of that product from our company, we do have the recycling、uh, machine to process、uh, this. Um, films, for example, we can add、um, a different uh, different uh, components to、um, change the property of the products so that it can enhance the possibility of the materials to be re reused. And we can reuse the products to produce different products, such as the、um, plastic and、um, buckets, etc. But、um, it doesn't really have a lot of economic.、Um, Uh, margins. That's why it's not that uh, uh, attractive, and、uh, we're trying to make the process、uh, even simpler. And if we can reduce the cost, maybe the more company companies are willing to invest in plastics that are not that easy to be recycled and to reuse these materials. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Lin from Polystar. And next. May we please hear from、uh, Mr. Cho from PIDC? Just like we heard from our distinguished guests, we face a lot of challenges from recycling's point of view. In recent years, we can see a few trends, and I would like to share with you the latest trends. Number one. Especially here in Taiwan, our manufacturers or users of these plastic products, we always have this、um, concept of reduce our cost for recycled materials. When we when, when manufacturers receive these recycled materials, the main purpose. Is to reduce their、uh, cost rather than adding more values. But now we have a new concept.
call the waist down to a lower the waist. So this is closely related to all the manufacturers or uh, the machinery, uh, plastic machinery uh, makers. The idea is to use the minimum resources to make our products without wasting anything that is not necessary. So the concept is very is different from reducing cost, the concept we had in the past. But, and now we know the products are very complex, using a lot of complex materials. But if we look at it from a different perspective, we have a lot of materials that are derived from uh, natural, and uh, for these polymetric materials, derived from crude oil. And yet we can actually find the new added values in these materials, meaning that we are trying to um, increase our use of recycled materials and we use less new materials. And one of the uh, trends we have is, we you talked a lot uh, about the 4R, but now we have the new concept of rethink. One of the concepts is redefine. So we redefine our products, we redefine the purpose of the products and how the consumers are going to use these products. And by using these new ideas, we de design the uh, products that have more added values and the products are more uh, are easier to be recycled. And the consumers, and, and the consumers need to take uh, one concept, just like what Mr. Lin said. After recycled, the purity of the materials will go down, so it will affect the uh, quality of the products. So the qual the if the products um, the, the quality is lowered, but it is actually made by uh, using recycled materials, using a very uh, um, high-end technology. So even the quality of the products are lower, but if the consumers can appreciate the fact that uh, the uh, products are used uh, are made of recycled, pro uh, um, recycled materials, if the consu consumer can take that and appreciate that, then the manufacturers will be um, encouraged to use recycled materials. Thank you. So from the comments we heard, we know that we face more challenges, more challenges than the opportunities we have. However, restriction of um, plastic use is the trend, so this is also the uh, challenge we just have to face. And for Tantra, we um, have collected a lot of information that can be shared um, to our manufacturers. Now, this, um, we're using too many natural resources, and especially the business models. We have a lot of products uh, having too many packagings using uh, plastic materials that are uh, detrimental to the environment. Especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of the uh, food delivery um, services is thriving and uh, that uh, usually increase the amount of um, plastic packaging. And of course, we want to um, go along with the um, global trend we thank all the uh, three, uh, the heavyweight um, speakers to share with us uh, views. Once again, thank you very much. And uh, thank you uh, for all the viewers who participated in this online CEO talk. Thank you.
Kaisra collected the um, plastic restriction policies around the world. And uh, we collected information to uh, produce a, a document called The Future of Rubber Plastic and the Packaging Machinery Under Plastic Res Restriction Policy. And it also includes the directory of um, rubber and uh, plastic machinery uh, manufacturers. You're welcome to download the e-version of this document by scanning the um, QR code on the screen. And we are also are going to, for Taito, we are also holding a, a circular economy Taiwan exhibition as well as the uh, Taiwan International Water Week. Once again, we thank all our viewers online. Thank you very much for joining us. And in the afternoon, we're going to have online interview. And uh, please stay with us. Thank you.